So if you want to graph a problem like this, there's a couple things that get students stuck when trying to identify like the characteristics that are going to make up this graph. So in this video, that's exactly what I want to explore because a lot of students will get stuck because they recognize here, notice that there's no vertical asymptote. Now I'm doing that in my head and if you're wondering how I know that, I'm going to go through that in this video as well as explain to you and show you step by step how to graph a function like this. Now the first step I always tell my students when graphing a rational expression is to simplify, simplify, simplify. But the problem here is there's nothing we can simplify here, right? This is simplified and my denominator is simplified. I can't factor and divide and look to divide things out. We are basically in simplified form. So now the next step is then at least let's go ahead and see if we can identify some asymptotes, right? We gotta have something to put on the graph to understand where the graph is going to be approaching. And the first thing is I'm looking at my vertical asymptotes. And remember when you wanna find your vertical asymptotes, just set your denominator equal to zero. Right now, obviously, if you want to simplify first, you know, make sure there's a hole or an asymptote, but in this case, there's nothing to do. So now when I go and solve for x, okay, I'm going to get plus or minus i squared of 5. Now, a lot of times students will say, hey, that's my asymptote, and they'll still graph it on there. And please do not do that. That's a huge mistake that I see students do. Remember, guys, this is your imaginary number system, right? Does it make sense to plot an imaginary number or imaginary representation, imaginary number for an asymptote on a real number system? No, right? So. This, what this basically stating, it telling us is there's no vertical asymptote, all right? So the graph is going to be defined for all values of x because there's no holes and there's no vertical asymptotes. So let's go to the next asymptote, horizontal asymptote. Now remember the horizontal asymptote is gonna fall from our horizontal asymptote test, which basically states you gotta compare the degree in your numerator compared to your degree in your denominator. Whenever the degree in the denominator is larger than the degree in your numerator, y is equal to zero. All right, now we got somewhere, right? So now we got something we can work with. It's not much, it's not a lot, but it's something we can work with, okay? We got something, that's good. All right, um, the next thing, let's go ahead and find the x and y intercepts. So if I wanna find the x intercept, remember that's when y is equal to zero, or if you've already done this a couple times, you already know that you can just set your numerator equal to zero and solve, so x is equal to a negative two. So how does this work? How can you have an intercept on a horizontal asymptote? A lot of students will say that can't happen. And I think that's a, the reason is, is one of the things we try to instill with our students is like, you can't cross a vertical asymptote. You cannot have a point on a vertical asymptote. The graph is always approaching vertical asymptotes, which is true. Vertical asymptotes are what we call discontinuities. Horizontal asymptotes are not discontinuities. The graph can be defined where a horizontal asymptote is. The thing you need to understand about asymptotes is that is where the graph is approaching. Vertical asymptotes are undefined. That's what makes the denominator equal zero. We know you can't divide by zero or the world will end, right? But horizontal asymptotes, you actually can cross. Now, I don't know how this graph is gonna cross, so that's why it's gonna be important to find the y-intercept. And the y-intercept is when x is equal to zero, or you're gonna take constant over constant, and you know that here the y is equal to a two-fifths. All right, so that's gonna be some decimal here. So that's gonna be two-fifths is kind of small number here. Right there. So it's crossing like that. Now, I don't know how this graph is going to look, but I can definitely tell like, if you're gonna connect these, like it has to approach this asymptote and it has to approach that asymptote, I kind of have a general idea. So if I was gonna be a betting man, I would say the graph is gonna look something like this. Right, because it has to go through these points. Like I basically have a general idea. Now, just to verify though, let's just double check to make sure it works. So what I'm gonna do is let's do some test points. Um, let's do y sub negative three. If I plug in a negative three, negative three plus two is going to be a negative one. Negative three squared is gonna be nine, plus five is going to be a 14. So negative one fourteenths, um, looks like that, so yeah. Goes like that, right? So you can see how that would make sense. And then let's do another point over here, let's just do one. Why so one? It better be positive, right? So one plus two is going to be three. One squared plus three is gonna be six. Yeah, so that'd be basically one half, right? And so you can see like, yeah, that kind of like makes some sense. All right, so again, the shape of the graph, like obviously you could do many more test points, many more points to be able to find the shape, but that's what I would probably incur that the graph would look like. And hopefully this video then gave you some value as far as step-by-step -step how to do it, even when you have an undefined value. But if you want more examples of graphing rational expressions, then go ahead and check out the examples I have for you down below. Or if this video gave you some value, then you're gonna love the next video I have for you here.